by natural numbers. <clears throat> and um, I've already mentioned pseudo Cauchy sequences, but let me define them here because we only need to consider um, this case. Um, and um, yeah, that's AI. Pseudo Cauchy, Pseudo Cauchy, you see, for short, if, um, yeah, if, if the terms get closer and closer, uh, uh, if uh, there exists, if for some I zero, for some index I zero, uh, a j, let's say a k minus a j is very small compared to a j minus a i for all, all k bigger than j bigger than i bigger than or So from some point on, the differences between um, the terms really become um, small, uh, smaller. Um, yeah, so how do you think of them? Okay, uh, here you could have AI, and then let's say uh, some, for some leg bigger index, you might have AJ. Um, and then with the next one, AJ plus one, or, um, Let's say AI plus one here. And AI plus two will have to be much closer to AI plus one than AI plus one is to AI. So AI plus one will, will let's say, AI plus two, much, more, much closer to this than this is to that. And then the next one will be much closer to AI plus two than AI plus two is to so this will be AI plus three. And then well, I can't picture it anymore. But the terms get really bunched up. <laughs> but because of the yeah, because of the non-Archimedean nature of the of the ordered field K, um, <clears throat> of course you can't really the gap here might still be infinitely large. All these gaps between the all these uh, quantities may still be infinitely large. Anyway, let me maybe, I'll give an example where you can really see this in. Um, right. Uh, yeah, maybe I should equivalently. Yeah. It's important to get some intuition for, for these uh, sequences equivalently. You can just say aj plus one minus aj is uh, a is usable compared to ai plus one minus ai uh, all uh, j bigger than i. Now we don't really care about some of the initial terms. Um, <coughs> but only about what happens uh, far down the sequence. <clears throat> okay, and then a pseudo limit. Yeah. yeah, basically trying to mimic the notion of a Cauchy sequence and a limit with a pseudo limit. Pseudo limit of uh, AI. <clears throat> Is it, uh, well, for our purpose, it will just be an element in an ordered field extent. In principle, it could be an element in the valued field extent, but uh, we are only dealing with ordered fields with an element in ordered. So it might not be in K itself, but in some ordered field extension. Okay, such that. <clears throat> Then for some from some index 
question I zero. Uh, a minus a j is tiny compared to a minus a i. Well, a bigger than i bigger than equal to i zero. So the, again, uh, there is some a here. The distance between a and a i uh, is uh, much bigger than the distance between a and a i plus one. Yeah, again, this it would be enough here to, to require this for all um for the case j equals i plus one okay uh, and in that case we say also that ai pseudo converges uh, notation ai a the absolute converges to A. And that actually does imply that this is a PC sequence. Uh, in that case, so when you have a pseudo limit, you must, it must, here in the definition, I didn't require this to be a PC sequence, but, uh, but it follows in that case, A I. Yeah, um, and let me just give an example. And then we also say that AI is sequence pseudo converges in K if it has a pseudo limit in K. Uh, AI pseudo converges. Okay. Again, this is just terminology. AI pseudo um, has A as a pseudo limit, just as A and K. Let me give an example to uh, That I hope will clarify this. Um, for example, you have the well known field of Fieser series over the reals. Um, uh, uh, why don't I call it a? So the K is the union over all. Uh, The low null series in t to the power one of d over the reals. For every d greater than one, you take uh, the union, and that's the field of Pisa series. Four of the field of Pisa series. Every Pisa series has is a, a series. In powers of t, but the exponents are all integral multiples of a fixed uh, uh, d, uh, integral multiples of a fixed one of a d or a d natural number. Formal Peter series. Okay, and then um, take that a i is well t to the minus one plus t to the power minus a half plus t to the power minus one of i plus one. Yeah, I have to, since I allow i to be zero, I have plus one there. <clears throat> but that's in k. And this is a typical example of a PC sequence. Um, Uh, because every time you add, you get add something that is uh, much uh, 
Wait a minute, am I doing it the wrong way around? Um, T is, is infinitesimal, so these are actually infinite, but this is much less infinite. Yeah, so <laughs> all these AIs are actually infinitely large, but every time you go to the next term, you add something that is still infinitely large, but it's much negligible compared to the earlier terms. So it is an AI is a PC sequence. But it has no pseudo limits in uh, K. But, uh, there's not, there's not pseudo converge in K itself. Because a, um, you know, if you had a pseudo limit, it would have to have um, uh, each of the AIs as an initial segment, but would have to be some sequence, sorry, some series that would have each of the AIs as, a, as an initial segment. But then the, 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 the denominators here are not all, um, uh, you know, integral multiple. No, the exponents here are not integral multiple fixed. Uh, one over d. So this has no. Um, this is a typical example of a. Yeah, but it does have a pseudo limit in in a certain extent. Uh, but it, but it does have. But uh, let's say a i pseudo converges in the inf. If you are allowed to now to take infinite sums, i is. Infinity to the power of minus one over i to the one. Uh, but this lies in a, not in k itself, but in, in let's say, well, just take now all uh, rational exponents, uh, and of course, with a well ordering restriction um, as usual. Uh, so it does have this as a pseudo. So I, I hope this gives you a reasonable appreciation about this. And um, but you see, this is not a Cauchy sequence uh, because uh, uh, difference between AI plus one and AI does not go to zero. In fact, it is always infinite. Uh, in this, uh, okay. Now we have the following. Um, and this is the correct the, the um, evaluation theoretic characterization of eta one following following two conditions. K okay. is eta one, the, the underlying ordered set, of course. K okay, is eta one. Secondly, well, there are um, three conditions that you have to check the residue field or the residue field is, is exactly R, or the residue field. Okay, it's all of R. Uh, every PC sequence, every PC sequence, AI, again, with I restricted to the natural numbers, pseudo converges in K. Okay. And the value group, which of course is itself an ordered linearly ordered set, is eta one. And the uh, value group ordered. There's an ordered set. I mean, this is simply one of very many results 
where uh, a problem about uh, a field K is reduced to a simpler problem, which is the principle. Um, simple problem about the residue field and the value group. Of course, so the, the residue field has to be R and the order value group has to be either one and since the value group is supposed to be simpler. Uh, yeah, and of course, there is still, there is also this every PC sequence in K to the convert K. Okay, so this is, well, this isn't uh, very deep, uh, but um, still it would be a little too much of my time to uh, give you the proof. So I can simply refer to, uh, for example, Uh, let's see. Book by Pries Kramper. Pries, yeah. Priscilla Pries Kramper. But it's in German. Ungeordnete. Ungeordnete. Uh, structuren, well-known standards, source, uh, um, you know, ungodded ordered structures, <laughs> that is, ungodded structuren, etc. Uh, page 160, you will see, you will see this statement pretty much in this form. Um, I'm sure you can find it also in other places. For example, I suppose in the book of Wooden and Dale's super real fields will be there too. Um, right, so I'm just, uh, you could also simply take it as an exercise, uh, but you will have to do a bit of work to do it. It's not. Uh... Okay, so now. Um, if we have a maximal Hardy field, then of course it must contain all the real numbers in it. And that, well, that's the constant field, but uh, the constant field maps bijectively onto the residue field. So uh, for the maximal Hardy field, uh, this, this condition at least is automatically satisfied. Yeah. So it's, Or maximal Hardy fields. The fields is indeed R, is, is, is R in the sense that I indicated earlier. <clears throat> so, um, so I'm going to focus on this part. It's actually something we already did. Four or five years ago. Um, but it's the parts, well, we did it modulo the theorem, the main result of uh, our later notes. Uh, so, in some sense, it was only finished in like a year ago because better than the main result. Um, this is in some sense less deep because it doesn't depend on the main theorem uh, from our uh, big set of notes. Um, and that's, but it's still a lot of work to get to, to get this, get this second part uh, verified for maximal Hardy fields. Um, and if, um, Right. Maybe I'll say a little bit more of this uh, when I get when I finish more or less this part. <clears throat> um, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
Right, so in the next, of course, I think I have only this week and then the next week left. Test. Oops. Right to show. Showing. Every PC sequence. The Hardy uh, AI, FI, yeah. I'm talking about now germs of functions. Every piece is in the FI in a Hardy field. As a pseudo limit in a bigger hard, in a possibly bigger Hardy field, as a pseudo limit. Extension and of course, in particular, this means that if H is a extension, in particular, this means that every such uh, PC sequence in a maximal Hardy field has a pseudo limit in in that same maximal Hardy field. First, there's no extension except itself. Uh, Right. And um, yeah, and a rather interesting construction, I think. Uh, yeah, and that that does use our uh, main theorem. Yeah. You always extend the Hardy field to one that is H closed. Do field closed omega free Newtonian? <coughs> Um, we don't know who will respect without using um, Okay. Yeah, as I said, the, uh, the other part of the value group of a maximal Hardy field with eight or one, it's, uh, it's arguably less deep, though, a lot of work still, because it doesn't depend on our main theorem. Uh, okay. Um, so let's let's go back now to a general ordered field that AI be a PC sequence. Uh, ordered field. So of course later on we are, we are going to apply this to first Hausdorff fields and then to to Hardy fields. Uh, Keep things as simple as possible with the thick modern field for the moment. And suppose, yeah, um, try to show search. Yeah, well, suppose we try to show that it actually has a pseudo limit in K itself. How would we go about that? Suppose we try to show. AI um, Well, I'm going to indicate the reduction to a more manageable problem so it indicates Okay. Uh, basically, I'm going to reduce to the case where AI is a sum of AI terms. Yeah, so sort of like in that example. Uh, right. Well, the first thing to notice, these AIs are, um, you know, 
Okay, here you could, you could have AI here, you could have AI plus one here, you could have AI plus two here, you could have uh, AI plus uh, uh, three here, and then, and then anyway, it, it, it could, it could go back and forth, right? It's not always the AIs are not necessarily increasing, but you can always go to a, a subsequence, which is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Yeah, by the way, if you have a PC sequence, um, from some point on, the terms are all different from each other, right? That, that's followed from the definition. So, um, we're just throwing away a few terms in the beginning, get really an injective sequence. And that means that there is a subsequence that is um, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. And so, um, yeah, so any subsequence, any, any subsequence, okay, I uh, has the same. Same pseudo limits is also is also uh, same pseudo limits. So PC sequence same pseudo limits as the I in all in all other field extensions doesn't matter. Uh, so by passing, so we can arrange passing by passing to subsequence. The um, range the I strictly by throwing away some initial terms if you like increasing strictly decreasing. Now strictly decreasing by taking negatives, we simply change to the strictly increasing case. Yeah. Strictly decreasing. Um, the latter case, the latter case, is uh, reduced to the former. And, uh, Yeah, so as I said, I'm actually going to reduce to a case where AI is a sum like that. Uh, and the terms are rapidly decreasing in size, but all positive. Um, right, so assume, so assume. A I strictly increasing. Now you can also uh, simply by adding, by translating over a certain element, assume that all the terms are positive. Right? By translation. Uh, oh, and let's say A I plus one minus A I. Strictly smaller, uh, strictly dominated by AI minus AI minus one for so all, okay, minus one for so all, I think, to Y. Um, by translation, by adding the same thing to all the terms, of course, that doesn't make any difference uh, for the different by translation. Pseudo limits also just yeah, same thing. By translating, uh, can also arrange a zero positive. Yeah, so that means all the other terms are also uh, positive. Um, and now we we simply 
take these differences as, as terms of a series. So set B0 A0 and BI BI equals AI minus AI minus one for I takes to one. And then it means that um, all the I are positive. Of course, this is a strictly increasing sequence. Uh, BI will strictly dominate uh, or BI plus one strictly. Well, it doesn't, doesn't matter how you BI strictly dominates BI plus one or I <coughs> and uh, and A N and A N is now B zero plus. We have changed the terms of the PC sequence into uh, partial sums, so to say, for an infinite series. And now um, this has okay. So this has the following consequence. Uh, the following I we have basically translated trans, uh, reduced the problem to proving that all PC foreign yeah. are equivalent for K one all PC sequences. Um, pseudo converge as uh, well, I should say AI. Okay. okay. Seventhly, fairly mild reduction, but for every, for every. Uh, sequence if you now think of sequence think of it as partial sum so to say the energy uh bn with b0 with uh all bn's positive and bn dominating and this one for n uh, yeah this is sequence this is A N if A N equals B zero A P N to the conclusion Right, um, yeah. That's basically what the story amounts to. Um, and but this is this is more uh, how shall I say turns out to be more amenable or manageable um, for our story. Okay. Oh, only oh. not too much time left, I see.
you see, we are now going to apply this to Hausdorff fields, and then we can then and a little bit of uh, analytics analysis will come in. So. So it's like a Hardy field, but um, no uh, differentiability or uh, being close to under the derivative, undertaking derivatives. So uh, these are just elements are just terms of continuous functions at present infinity. But it's as a hence. Let's say we, we, we already put ourselves in that situation there, but I will use now an Fs instead of Bs. Uh, F0 dominates, uh, strictly dominates F1, F2, F3. Well, it become rapidly much smaller in H or in, uh, in H. Oh, yes. And I'm assuming all that they are positive, so I write H bigger than, which is our abbreviation for a set of positive elements. Um, right. Well, then, uh, the sets. Uh, is at zero positive. Um, and we try to construct a pseudo limit. We uh, try to construct. This can be done, construct a pseudo limit. Special sums. In a hard field extension. Might not be done in as follows. Well, see, we are going to replace these f's by actual functions. Uh, so represent. So let first of all let's simplicity restrict to T to be greater than to one, you know. There are minor technical reasons why, why this is convenient, but they will only emerge later on. And now represent each germ Fn by uh, a continuous function. <clears throat> And it's also denoted by Fn. Um, right? We often denote term and representative by the same letter just to avoid to a lot of uh, complicated notation. And in such a way, such that S and T greater than to zero for all t, and this is, this is really less than equal to half fn plus one t is less than equal to half fn t for all, all uh, n comma t. Uh, all natural numbers n and t greater than to one. Can, how can we do that? Um, well, I mean, each fn is, is the germ of some continuous function. So, um, and um, say f0, you look at f0 and you uh, say, um, um, you just extend it to a continuous function that's defined to on all of uh, one comma plus infinity. And you keep it positive. And then the next F1, you have to represent by a continuous function that is, well, ultimately, 
f1 will be less than or equal to a half f0. That's because of, right? Um, so, um, but then you have to extend it all the way down to one such that um, f1 t is still less than or equal to half f0 t. But of course you can do that. You, you have a lot of freedom to extend your function uh, the interval from one to plus infinity. And next you take F2, which will be less than equal to have F1 far enough to infinity, but then you extend it all the way down to one plus infinity so that it's less than equal to half F1t, et cetera. So this can be done in many ways. And that has the effect that you can form the sum of the events as a yeah. and uh, capital F is uh, n and is zero infinity exists as a continuous function. Um, because the convergence of uh, this series um, is guaranteed by 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 this here, uh, point wise, but in fact even uh, on each compact subset of, one, of this interval, convergence is uniform, um, and so this uh, because of this convergence being uniform. Um, is um, right, and I need to finish quickly. So, um, access, let me first say as an exercise this has at least the following desirable property F minus Fn. I'll leave you to check that uh, the difference between F and Fn, which is of course uh, the sum of the, the sum is the sum of the F, uh, F uh, M is M bigger than N, M equals N plus one to infinity. Um, well, all the terms here are very small compared to, to this Fn, but, and, and, but in such a way that you can show that this is, um, this function strictly dominates that function. And then a lemma which takes a bit more work uh, than this exercise. Um, and if H is real closed, fairly harmless assumption, and it and the Fn's do not through the conversion F in, in H itself, of N and Fn uh, does not through the converge. H, then it through the converges. Then F generates a Hausdorff field extension. Of fields, uh, in fact, even an immediate other field extending is F. Uh, sorry, just the field generated by it, just generates a field um, over eight. Uh, of H and Fn to the convergence is to the convergence to F. So this is a very simple analytic construction of pseudo limits. Right. So I, I have to stop here because over time. So I'll uh, assume this. Uh, Okay, I mean, I could 
I could also leave this as an exercise, but it, <laughs> this is not such an easy exercise, but it's still on a, on, a fair, on a very low level compared to the things that we will have to do. So I'll, I'll leave that as... Uh, it will, I mean, the details are, are in our paper um, anyway, but you could also simply try to prove it for yourself. Um, certainly not deep, uh, it's just, you know, just have to use, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll continue with, um, but this is sort of a basic construction of pseudo limits. Uh, and how it all feels. And there's a lot of flexibility left that we all have to exploit. Oh, yeah. 